Hi, I'm Aaron Lapidus, the Garage Sale Millionaire. Have you ever thought about putting on a great garage sale but didn't know how? With this episode, we're going to teach you and we're going to make a lot of money doing it. Welcome to my garage. I'm sorry it's a little messy, but we're going to solve that problem. We're going to have a garage sale. I know you're thinking it's a lot of work, but think of the great things that are going to happen. We're going to clean out the garage. You're going to be able to bring your vehicles back in the garage and not leave them in the elements like a lot of your neighbors have to, and then we're going to make some money. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to gather everything from the basement, from the closets, from the desks, from the dresser drawers, stuff that you haven't used in years, and we're going to put it all in the garage. We're going to clean it up a little bit. We're going to do some light repair and we're going to make a lot of money. It's very, very easy. Get a family member or two, make the work go a lot quicker. And then we're going to take it out for the very next day where we're going to have the best garage sale ever. And we're going to have a lot of fun do it. And we're going to make tons of cash. So hold on and get ready. This is very important to understand. There's going to be a lot of the things that you put in your garage that you're going to get ready for the garage sale that may have some memories. That's okay, but if you haven't used that item in a long time, why keep it? You know, a memory is a memory. It's something that you can always keep inside your head. But to have it take up room in your garage, now that's just a waste of space. Now I'm going to give you a good example. These antlers right here. I actually found it in a forest on the back side of my parents' cabin. Thought it was really cool and we mounted it and it's been kind of fun way back when. Somebody else could use them and have a lot more fun than I could. And if it was in an antique store or something like that, it probably would go for around four to five hundred dollars because the mounting alone costs about two or three hundred dollars. But I want it gone, so I'm probably going to price it between eighty-five and ninety-five dollars. Probably take seventy-five dollars. So let's put this over here and let's see what else I got. I have this little thing that's supposed to work you out. I don't think it's really helped my physique much. I'm going to see how it works. It's very crucial that you understand if it works or doesn't work because when somebody's getting ready to buy it, they're going to want you to show them how it works. So I'm imagining you sit back in it and, um, and you pull these bars up and then it helps you go back and forth. So um, I just, well, I see we need to do some light repair on this one. You only need some screws and, and if you have somebody handy, which I do, I have my father-in-law, Don. This is going to be difficult to fix. No, all you need is a couple of quarter 20 by two inch um, hex bolts and a couple of cap nuts and good as new. I have really no idea what that means, but he does and that's why I have him helping me fix it. So Don, I'm going to let you handle this while I walk around and see what else I can find to get ready to go in my garage sale. I got Don working on that fitness equipment, if that's what you call it, and I'm going to move on to this bike. Now, if you're selling a bike, something obvious that people are going to want to ride to try it out. You want to make sure it works and the tires are not flat. And as I can tell, these tires are flat. So, you know, dust off the seat a little bit and then take my little pump. Another thing that I don't really ever use that much of. And so we're going to fill it up. It really feels like I'm not doing anything. Okay, looks pretty good. So now this is the important thing. I got air in the tires. Uh, this, is, this is my wife's bike. Um, I don't know how well it works. And I'm exhausted, but I'm going to get on this bike and ride it around to make sure it works. Okay, here we go. I'm riding the bike. I'm riding the bike. I'm right. I'm almost falling off the bike. Okay. Okay, That's, that was exciting. The bike works good. 
and I'm comfortable enough to say that I can sell this for the most amount of money. The tires are working, it's relatively clean, so I'm probably going to start the price about $125. Now, once again, always leave yourself a little room to negotiate because I'll probably take a lot less, but this bike is truly in great condition. And sometimes people will offer you a little amount of money for something that you know you can make a lot more money on eBay or Craigslist. And when you know that, don't sell it. Sell this stuff that you know is going to be a headache for you to get rid of later. Things that are don't worth that much but take up a lot of room, those are the things you need to get rid of right away for whatever it takes. Okay, now let's try it out. Okay. Here we go. So that's the way it's supposed to work. That and what I did with the bicycle pump. I am going to be in great shape after this garage sale. So, this is what happens when you make things work. Now I know I can get some good money on it. I can teach people how to use it. It's in working condition, and soon it's going to be working in somebody else's house. And I'm oh so happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the next thing that we have to clean up and get ready? Let's move on over, because this is only going to get better. My dad, uh, he was just amazingly uh, gifted as far as putting things back together, doing small repairs, helping out, lifting some heavy items. Um, I definitely could not have done it without either one of them. Yeah, this driver right here has let me down a lot. That's why we're selling it. Yeah, it's all the driver's fault. Uh, yeah, drive for show and putt for dough. And I was only showing that I couldn't drive with this thing, so we're going to be selling this. Now, I have to tell you that if it's in good shape, a driver you can find at some of these used sports store for like $20 with everything. So I'm not going to get $20 for this. I'm going to start it at $5. So that's the price I'm going to start off with it. But can I ask what you're doing? Now, this is a good example of what will happen at your garage sale. This happens to be my beautiful dear wife taking something out of my garage that I've wanted to sell for a long time. But the way you handle this is let every family member take one item, whatever they want. Don't complain, don't mock them, just let them have it. Because that's the way to make a household a happy household. So honey, Yes, you can have that. Great, can I have this too? <laughs> Give an inch, take a mile. <laughs> oh, okay, go ahead. Thank you. Luckily she can't carry anything more, so that's all she's going to take. There's one other thing. <sighs> this is um, one of these Papazons, I think. Uh, yeah, boy. Now, with this and maybe a beer, Little TV, I'm good to go. I'm going to price this around $12 to $15. Brand new, I think they cost around $25 to $45. It's in great shape. On to the next great thing. This is about as close to boxing as I ever got, and the bag has very little air in it, and this is obviously not on the wall. So I'm going to sell it. Brand new, I think it was like around $85 and I had to put it all together. I'll probably start this off at like $20. So if you're going to sell electronic, be prepared that people are going to ask to see it work. <laughs> Imagine that, working. Everybody wants something, but in theory, it needs to work. So I have a TV over here. I've actually not seen it work for a long, long time but I'm going to see it work now because if it doesn't work, you don't want to sell it. Don, do we have a power cord? Thank you. So 
I am going to plug it in. And now this is really, really handy to have during the garage sale. You're going to want to have a long, long extension cord so you can bring it right to the garage sale. Now this is really handy. I'm really proud of myself that I did this. When I stored the TV, I stuck in a plastic bag the remote. So crucial to have the remote. If you're a guy, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm going to take off the remote. I'm going to hit power. I'm a little nervous, I gotta tell you. Oh, I hear something. I hear something. Don't, oh, and we see something. So this works. I'm very happy to know that the remote has batteries in it that make the TV turn on. That's all you need. Now you turn it off. People are just going to want to see that. So we turn it off. We put the remote back in the plastic bag. We zip it up. And then we're good to go. These kind of TVs don't go for much. I'm going to sell it at about $25 and be happy if I get close to it. That's what I'll price this at. God, I'm happy that works. Now let me show you these price cards. Yes, we did pay money, but they're very, very inexpensive. They were like a, a penny each. Now you don't have to use these. You can just use dark tape and do a black magic marker, and that's basically free. But I actually had these in my store, so we're going to use them because I have thousands of them. So we're going to put a price on it. Some stuff we're going to price and some stuff we're not. And the reason for that is the little stuff you just want to get rid of and let people make you an offer. That's the easiest way. The more expensive the stuff is, you need to give them a ballpark or you're going to hear the most ridiculous offers you ever heard. So let's at least guide them to a point that is not absurd and doesn't embarrass them and doesn't embarrass you when they make you an offer. For that Papasan chair, let's just put a price of $15 on that. Now for that punching bag, we're going to put $29. Why didn't I say $30? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's all psychological. $30 sounds so much. $29, let's just get a little crazy. Let's say $29.95 because that sounds like it's almost free right there. I didn't say 30, I said 29.95. Now, this was a great movie, but it's VHS. There are a lot of people that still have VHS. Understand, this VHS tape may have cost you 20 bucks, but right now it's worth a buck 50. That's the very, very most. And what's going to happen is, people are going to go to your pile of VHS tapes probably take maybe three, maybe four, or more, and they're going to make you a bulk price. I have to tell you, if they're not making stuff anymore, get rid of it. It's not nostalgia if it's just cluttering up your basement. It's junk. So understand if people offer you 50, 75 cents for each one of these, even though they cost you a lot of money back in the day, take the money. And one thing that you should always remember is when you get things and you put them in your garage sale, be prepared for them not to sell. If they don't sell, then you have to think of what you're going to do with them. And that is either donate them to Goodwill or Salvation Army or, or the Veterans Association. Whatever works for you. So understand you don't want to keep it. You want to do this garage sale once a year at the most. And things that can't sell, you need to give away. And when you give it away, you're able to write it off on your taxes, which is just as cool because you help somebody out and you save a little money during tax time. This is the night before the garage sale. I expect that you need to do some of this stuff beforehand. But one of the things you need to do is call your friends and family and let them know you're having a garage sale. They've probably been to your house. They've probably been to your garage. They may have been in some of your closets, maybe your basement. And you want to tell them that you got great stuff, and if they show up, you'll give them even a better deal. Not only are you going to let you, all your friends know, all your family know, but you're going to get it on Facebook. So you want to put it on your Facebook saying that you're having an awesome garage sale. Please come and see all the wonderful things. The next thing, which is as important, is put it on Craigslist. Craigslist is the biggest free online website there is. And that's where a lot of people 
list their garage sales. It's very easy, and once again, I said free. Put it on there, give your date, give your location, and tell what are the great things that are going to be in your garage sale. These are all great things that will drive people to your garage sale and help you get more people to show up. And that's the goal. The more people, the more money, and you get the stuff out of your garage. Now this is one of the most important things you can do, is doing the sign. I have to say that a lot of people think this means nothing, but without the signs, people are not going to know you're having a garage sale. Most of the people are going to come from the streets. And that's the busy streets I'm talking about. You want to have them on the closest intersections that you can find. And the signs need to be big. Don't use the ones that you can buy in the store that are like 8 by 10 and say garage sale and it's a little bit, little handwriting you have to put your address in. They're not going to work. Imagine going 35 miles down the road. How many of those signs do you really see? And they, they cost like three or four bucks. Don't do it. Get some cheap stuff like this. If you have a local frame shop, they'll probably give it to you next to nothing. It's matte board. It'll stay firm and through the weather. So if it gets a little wet, you don't have to worry about it. So the bigger you write it, and the more information you give them, the better chances are that they're going to show up at your garage sale. Now, you don't want to write three chapters of War and Peace on this sign. You want to give them the exact information that you think they're going to need to make the decision to come to your garage sale. And these are the important things. Now, I like to say big garage sale. Some people say huge, some people say multi-family garage sale. These are all things that really, really work. But the big garage sale is what I'm going to do with this sign. You don't have to be neat, because I'm not. And I'm going to just write, but I'm going to put in big writing. Garage sale. Now, you don't have to be an artist, but you just need to make it look good. So I now have the big garage sale. The next important thing is you need to put the address. Yes, you do. The address. And I'm going to put the address down below. And once again, you want to make it big because people are driving very fast. And it may sound funny, but make sure you spell the street name correctly. I know you think that never happens, but I guarantee you it does. So I got the address, but now this is the huge but, the time and the date. I only believe in having it one day during the week, and Saturday is the number one day to have the garage sale. And now the time, 9 to 3 is the best time. Anything after three, people are going to barbecues and they're not buying. So I cut it off right at three and guaranteed people are going to show up anyway later. They're going to want to root around in the boxes of all this stuff you're going to get ready to throw away or give away or put back in your garage. Let them look. But all the real buyers are going to come at nine, <coughs> probably more like eight. So we're going to put these signs out very, very early in the morning. But what we're also going to do is when we put the signs out in the morning, we're already going to be pretty much all set up. Because as soon as the first sign goes out, people are showing up at your door. You may even have some garage sale junkies sleeping on your lawn if they think there's going to be good stuff. And you want to put a couple items just to tantalize people's imagination. How does that look? Looks pretty good. And notice how I did it on whiteboard with a black magic marker. It has to really stick out. You don't want to do it on a dark board and like a red. It needs to be white. White is the number one. I could have used a red magic marker. That would have worked just as well. When you're hanging these signs up, make sure you have very, very strong tape and or nails and a hammer, certain things you can hammer on. People will drive three or four miles to go to a great garage sale. So that's why I think putting a lot of signs out is an awesome, awesome idea. 
libraries, places where people go to shop for food. These are all great places to get as much traffic to your garage sale as possible. Let me tell you how we're going to set this up tomorrow morning. We're going to put on the sign 9 o'clock and it's going to go 9 to 3 on Saturday. I recommend all you need is one day. If you're going to do it two days, Friday and Saturday, don't ever do it on a Sunday. It is a waste of time. I've done at least 50 garage sales and usually nobody shows up on Sunday. So we're going to do it 9 to 3 on Saturday, but we're going to set up at 8 o'clock. The reason for that is garage sale junkies are going to show up at least an hour early. Guaranteed. These people don't have a life. This is what they do. They're going to be at every garage sale early because they want to get all the good stuff before everybody else does. I'm looking around the garage, making sure I'm not missing anything. And here's something that you don't want to miss is the change purse. Make sure you have a lot of change. Ones, fives, and tens. Guaranteed people are going to be giving you 20s and you need to make change for it. Another thing you need to know, don't accept a check. If somebody doesn't have enough money to buy an item, have them give you a deposit and then come back on Monday to give you the rest of the money. I think that's an okay thing to do. Taking a check for an item is not smart business. And when people come to a garage sale, they know that's a cash only business. So a little bit of a deposit will buy them a few days. Something else I want everybody to understand, and this is very, very important. If somebody needs to use the restrooms, they need to go down the block to their local 7-Eleven and not your house. This is basic safety 101. Nobody goes in your house. For whatever reason, no reason is acceptable. Nobody goes in your house. Just say, sorry, I would like to, but right now I can't let anybody in my house. Whatever you're comfortable with saying, say it. But remember, it's not good business to let anybody in your house. That's where you have your money. That's where people can see, case your house. And I know I'm being hardcore about this, but I want people to be safe while having a garage sale. So you know the safety, you know about the change purse. The next thing you need to understand is, what about having a lemonade stand? You know, people are going to be thirsty. They may be hungry. This is an opportunity to make some more money. But let the kids in your neighborhood make this money. Tell them that you can put a lemonade stand right next to your garage sale. They can sell lemonade, they can sell cookies. You don't have any kids in the neighborhood? Ask your local charity. And I guarantee they'll be very, very happy to do this because they literally can make a couple hundred dollars in a short amount of time at a good garage sale. This way you get a little goodwill and the neighborhood is happy and you're happy because you made some money on your garage sale and you didn't leave anybody a little thirsty or a little hungry. And the more that they feel better about themselves, they stay a little longer at your garage sale so they can spend more money. And that is the name of the game. What a great evening. We got a ton of stuff done, but now we gotta go to bed because we have to get up really, really early, 7 a.m. That's what I told the cameraman to wake me up so we can get all our signs out and get our table set up so we can start making money. So go to bed because let's just say we have a long day in store for us. A lot of fun and hopefully a lot of money. When I came up with the idea to put on my very own garage sale and to have it filmed, I was thinking, wow, that's gonna be a lot of work. But I realized it was going to be a little work, but it was going to be a lot of fun. I haven't had a garage sale for a few years and I realized I've compiled so much great stuff. I mean, I had to make sure that everything that he had put together that it was of mine, um, that I didn't want to go out in the garage sale. I almost had to like do like a kind of a quick little tour of the garage sale just to make sure he didn't just take a few things and hit them here and there. Even my father-in-law and mother-in-law were excited to clean out some of their stuff in their house. So it was a group effort and, it, and you need a team to put on a great garage sale because there is a lot of work involved and the more people you have, it goes a lot quicker and easier. Aaron, hey, hey, wake up, yeah. it's Saturday morning. 
<laughs> hey, you guys. How's it going? Yeah, you took me serious about the 7 a.m., didn't you? Wow. We had a busy last night, but it's going to be all worth it because today we're going to be prepared. We're going to put out our signs right away, get our tables all laid out with my volunteers and friends. So when people see those signs and they show up early and they will show up early, we'll be ready for them. So you guys get out of here. I'm going to get dressed because we're going to make some real money today. Boy, are we. Ugh. Whose idea was it to get up this early? <laughs> Good morning. And what a great morning it is. I know it's a little early, but these are the things you have to do when you're putting on a great garage sale. Now we're going to go to the car where I have all the signs placed, hang them up, and hope for the best. Because that's the most important thing, to have the signs well placed so all your potential buyers can find out about your garage sale. Come on, let's go. See, I'm really close to the garage sale, so I just want to put some arrows so when people get close, they kind of know the right direction. You want to make sure you tape it really good, but know that you have to take them down. The neighbors would really appreciate it. These are the signs you definitely want to take down. The city sometimes frowns upon using their light poles as sign poles. You can never put up too many signs. Traffic stops for nobody, not even a person that's going to have a garage sale. Remember there's traffic and that's why you're putting up the signs right where all the traffic is. So be careful, I know you're really, really excited and you're going to have your garage sale really soon, but garage sale won't happen if you're not around to make it happen. When you're making your signs, if you live on a back street and it's an unknown street, please put two large cross streets so people can find out exactly where you are and they don't have to hunt around for your garage sale. Signs are probably the most important thing to do to get the most amount of people at your garage sale. But to get people from all over your home city, you may want to try Facebook and let all your friends and family know about it. Great way to get a lot of people finding out about what you're doing right away. You know, there's a lot of communities throughout the United States that have an annual garage sale. This is really good because all the families get together and put out a lot of great stuff and the community puts out the signs and does a lot of the legwork for you. You should check into that. It's a great idea. Well, we got all the signs hung up and I think they're well placed. Now it's time to go back and see what else we have to lay out, make sure it's all priced, looking good, and just get ready for some customers. I'm getting really, really excited. When you're displaying, if you put your taller objects in the back and your shorter objects in the front, you'll be able to stick a lot more on your um, on your table here. And also another good tip is is that if you have a dark table, try to put your lightest color items on your dark table because then there'll be a contrast and people will notice them a little bit more. This is just an old piece of cloth. But they always look a lot nicer when you have something that you can display them on as opposed to just putting them right on the ground or on the grass. How's it going? So far so good. Well, you got a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff for animals. <laughs> Yes, I, I did. You had a lot of things here for animals, which is great. And I'm over a volunteer over at the Denver Denference League, and I'm picking up some animal things. Well, that's isn't that nice? Yeah. Oh, this would be perfect. This will be perfect for our animals over there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, since you're doing that, what you find for animals is going to be free on Are you us. serious? Yep. <gasps> that's great. Oh, I so appreciate that. Not a problem. Gonna... Why don't you keep on looking around? Oh. 
because uh, you can't do enough for your organization. Oh, our animals, thank you. The cats, the dogs, the bunnies. <laughs> we all thank you so much. Well, I just wandered onto this wonderful garage sale here in Denver, Colorado, on my way to the Denver Dumb Friends League to do volunteer work. Dumb in meaning they can't speak for themselves, and so we find great homes for the animals in all kinds of areas. We get animals in from around the country, and we try to place them with really great homes, and there are all kinds of animals, young puppies from kitties and elderly. Uh, we just have a whole bunch of great animals and noticed that they had a whole bunch of pet supplies. So I'm thrilled. I was ready to fork out some bucks for this for our animals, but they've been donated. So I'm so tickled. And Denver Dumb Friends League thanks you guys so much for doing this. Everything can be made into a table. Remember, we want to sell it, not keep it for the next garage sale. I think the computers are going to definitely go. I think someone's going to come by and want to take all the computers and the TV. TV for sure is going to go. The antlers are going to be, a, it's going to have to be that real special person <laughs> who wants antlers uh, in their house. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that's going to be the tough sell today. I will be happy to see those antlers go. It will be out of my house. <laughs> you know, there's not everything you're going to be able to pull out of a box. Matter of fact, a lot of garage sale junkies like to dig around and find that one treasure. But if it's something really valuable and you know you're going to be able to sell it, place it where people can see. Kind of like this. Kitchen utensils go for good money especially if they're new or have the box and anything that goes along with it. If you have the instructions, the box, and even a warranty, make sure you put that all with it because that will get a lot more money for your item. I guarantee it. Well, I think the item's gonna sell today is the bicycle. The other great item that might sell will be the uh, Scott Speedy Green broadcast spreader over there. It's got a price on it of $20 and a brand new one is 40 and it's only been used once or twice and uh, it's practically brand new for 50% off. So I think that'll be a goer for sure. I'm actually on my way to a friend's house and we saw the big sign out there. We thought we could be the first ones here. Um, I'm an action figure collector and so uh, I don't have an Elvis so this will be my first Elvis. I'm uh, pretty stoked about it. Five bucks, it's a great deal. Really good deal the original packaging and First season of South Park. I still got a VHS, unfortunately, but what are you gonna do? Uh, when I get to the garage sale, I wanna get there early. I wanna be there first. Which signs did you see? Can I talk Parker? Why not Parker? You saw two of them. Yeah. You're good, good. Okay, we have a little money bag. Um, hold on a second, I'm gonna get your change. When you have a money purse, make sure you put it far away from the actual action. And always recommend that you have changed for 20s because that's what you're going to get most of the day. So she gave us a 20. We need to give her nine back. Thanks a lot, you guys. I appreciate that you stopping by. Thanks for coming on by. Yes, I am very happy to see the Kung Fu Elvis go. Yes. He wants to buy the big one. It cleans the air, but we're going to show him that it actually works because you don't want to sell something that doesn't work. You'll feel through here. You'll feel oh, very, very little breeze. But you need to clean it. Yeah. And then if it makes static noise, oh. you got to do this. Okay. Oh. And that if so, if you hear static, just do that, and then eliminates the static. How long do you just clean this thing? Uh, I clean it out once a week because oh. they get dirty. Okay, thank you. Great. You're welcome. Thank you for coming by. Okay. So it's 9:25. 25 minutes into our garage sale, and we've already made $42.50. Not too bad for a little bit of work. I think we're gonna make a lot more. My prediction, $300. You heard it here first. We'll see how we do at the end of the day. Okay, well, let's, let's go look at those antlers. Well, I wanna 
cut them off the mount, stick them in the front yard next to some old uh, petrified wood and stuff out in the front yard garden area. Oh, great, great. Just for decoration. What do you think is a fair price? I have it at $75. Tell me, go easy on me, but tell me what you think a fair price is. How about $45? 45. The mount alone, I know you're cutting it off, but that's a good deal. And these are, you know, this, this was a well, big- Can I give you 30 and you can have the mount? <laughs> How about, <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> How about $35? All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Yeah, what I do is I just, collect old antlers, put them out in the front yard. So how many garage sales have you come to that have antlers? Quite a few. Oh. All and I thought I was the first. You know, I actually am going to miss those antlers. They, they were a lot of fun. It was fun finding them. It was fun ha having them in my parents' cabin. But I think somebody else is going to enjoy them more. When you have a garage sale, you're always wondering, what is going to sell first? Am I going to make a lot of money off of it? And you know, I was kind of gauging, wondering, you know, is it going to be, is it, is it going to be a TV? Is it going to be a computer? Or, or is just one person going to buy all this? Put me out of my misery early. Um, so I didn't really know what was going to be bought, but when I saw several cars show up right at the same time, I knew things were going to be bought, and I was going to start off early to hit my mark of $300. That's kind of what I put to make for my garage sale. You know, if somebody wants to put something on hold for a half an hour, I think it's an okay thing. After the half hour, you gotta put it out because you gotta sell it. Time check. It's five to 10 and it's all well at the garage sale. We're looking around, stuff is going quick. And when that happens and it looks kind of sparse, you wanna move things from the back and move them to the forward. The reason for that is you always want to make it look like there's stuff to sell. If your garage sale looks a little bare, people are going to keep on driving on. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of spruce it up a little bit. All right, so I'm going to move some of this kind of nice stuff and move it to the front. Get things that are visible from the street because that will slow them down. A lot of times you'll see people keep on going. That's because they have about 30 seconds to realize, are they going to stay at your garage sale? or are they going down the road? This is a great car rack. I cannot believe this hasn't gone. Actually, I should keep it because I should probably be riding my bike more than I do. It was five each, but I'm gonna do 17 for all of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you need any help in the car with them? Thank you very much for coming back. And she came back, and most of them do. So like I say, you wait a half an hour, and then you put it on back. But this time it paid off to be kind and wait for the money because she did come back and she was very, very happy. Great, thank you very much. You know, I'm getting really close to my target. I predict it $300. I'm at right under $200. And we're only an hour and a half into this whole fun thing we call a garage sale. I'm excited. It's interesting though that it could rain, so I may have to make my money a lot quicker and hit my target a lot earlier than I thought, but I think I can do it. Well, this is uh, something we do every, every so often. We look for um, uh, different things for our house we just bought last year, so we pay attention to these signs when they're out and about, so I was out riding bike and saw it today. So. Yeah, some household goods, really. Uh, lamps, uh, uh, bargains, yeah. Yeah, bargains. Pretty good. Pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, it's kind of like in recycling, if you will, among communities. So what may not work for you anymore might work for, for us. Uh, so yeah, that's a, and it's cool, you never know what you're gonna see. And sometimes you can pick up some pretty good deals, pretty good products too. Sometimes so. uh, the best deal I ever got was a pair of Vocal skis for five bucks, three twenty-five I think, but they were new, so something like that. This goes around the neck of your seat and the neck of your handlebars, and this is what then gets strapped right there. 
It looks pretty cool. It's a little more complicated than yeah. the one we have. But it looks like it's a, a better made one. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to take the other one back. We save $15. You got $25. I have my pocket right now. Right now, burning a hole in your pocket. All right, now let me get this straight. The price is $35. He's offered me $25. He only has $25 in his pocket. What should I do? Well, the name of the game in a garage sale is to sell it. Okay, you got yourself a deal. Oh, 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 man. Yeah, I'll take the new one back. I still have the receipt. Oh, great. So that's $25. The rack on your car is another $25. <laughs> have a nice day. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Awesome. So that's 25, that's 5, so that's 30, and that's 34. You know, if you get two more, I'll give you one for free. Oh, you have, he has all the tapes. Okay. Thank you. Can't hurt for trying. Right now it's raining, but I have to say, people are so kind. People that are coming to the garage sale are actually helping me move everything because they don't want to see it get ruined. Now that is community spirit. Well, I have to tell you, it's, uh, it's all fun until the police show up. And you know, the police showed up. And I'm starting to think, wow, maybe I put some signs in the wrong places. And, and how embarrassing is it it's going to be caught on tape that I'm going to be arrested? Kind of the reason why I thought you were stopping by. No, no, it's not, it's not soliciting or anything like that. It's just say, hey, I just, yeah, I'm just having a garage. Sounds good. Thank you very much for You're stopping welcome. by. I Have appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that was awesome. The county's finest came by just to say hello and just to check on me and give me one warning that there are people because of this economy that will come to your garage sale and ask to get into your house. That was one of the tips last night that I warned everybody about. For no reason do you let somebody into your house because what they're going to do is case the house, see what you have to steal, and then good chance one day when you're not there, they will be. So please, take the warning from a police officer and from me. Don't let anybody in your house when you're having a garage sale. I think that's a tip to remember. I have a goal. In the garage sale, there's a few items in every sale that you have that you want to get rid of. I'm going to tell you what I want to get rid of. That right there. Hopefully, in a few hours, you will see that gone. I don't know why, but I don't like looking at it. So that is my goal to get removed. Sell it any ways I can, or any means, I want that gone. So here's a million dollar tip for you. When you're going to a garage sale, you may want to see what things are. And if you have an inkling that you can buy it and resell it, maybe that's something you should think about doing. But how would you do something like that? The item's right in front of you. You're at somebody else's location. Well, that's easy. Take your phone, type in what the product is. I'm going to look at this item right here. It's a Motorola wireless SBG900. It's so basically your computers can go online. So I'm going to put into my phone SBG900. And this is also good if you need to price something and you don't want to have your items too low or too high. So I'm going to search. So I just put that in the search item of my phone. Let's see what it comes up at may take you a little longer, but this is a good way to make sure you're giving a good deal, but not too good of a deal. Sometimes you may not want to sell it at your garage sale, but maybe eBay or Craigslist. Okay, I found one right here. And here we go. We have it. We have It's a Motorola Surfboard SBG900 cable modem. I have mine listed at $10. I'd actually be happy about getting $10 because it was just taking up room in the closet. This is what it's going on eBay for, $53. Exciting news. Our goal was $300. I predicted that at $925, that I was going to do $300. It is now 
$1,235, and we are at almost $400, and the money keeps on rolling in. I give myself till 3 o'clock, and the, and the garage sale is done. At 3, we'll see what happens. Can I hit $400? I'm only $10 away, but I think I'm going to go to $525. Let's see if I can do it. You come to a lot of garage sales? Yeah, in the summertime, I love it. Absolutely. Go down to the Pinery, there's about 80 to 100 of them. You know, in, in July, uh -huh. and uh, we go from garage sale to garage sale to garage sale. What's your best tip you can give everybody when they go garage sailing? The best tip would probably be never pay what they ask. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good tip. <laughs> it's all about the signs, too. How much you want for this? Buck? Buck. All right, there we go. We made a deal. We'll do a buck. Randy, so, do you have any more tips for the viewers? Well, I think if I was a single man, I'd go out garage sailing every Saturday morning to find a date for Saturday night. <laughs> because I think uh, I think there's a lot of nice ladies out there and a lot of guys, you know, you don't have to go to the bar, you just go garage sailing. We are out garage sailing, saw the sign and decided to stop by, see what they had. There's a pretty cool giant bike, a cruiser bike, that I'm looking for for my mom. And some watercolor painting paper for her. The bike's a pretty good deal compared to what I've seen on Craigslist, and we're just kind of still looking to see what they have here. Oh, you guys, right, thank, you very, thank much. you very much. See you later. Garage shells are a great way to find great stuff that you don't want to pay retail for, but of course you know that if you're watching this program. You know, as a person who's in sales, I always believe whatever the price is, it can be better. That's my best tip. I think that if you don't, I was always under the impression it's always a no until you ask. So that's my tip of the day. I think that's a great tip. Thank Mine's you. To go early. That's yeah. another good tip. Go early. If you want the best stuff, you go early. There's we no question. We slept in today, so we're missing out. But we did find this collector's baseball from July 3rd, Very nice. 1998. Very nice. And always try and find people like Aaron who have phenomenal stuff that they want to get rid of. This is true. Throughout the day, you kind of have to gauge the way you're negotiating. Early in the morning, you don't want to give up all your good stuff at dirt cheap. But when it's passing the 12 o'clock hour and going into the afternoon, you need to work the deals. And I'm not saying that be tough on every deal even in the morning, but you don't want to give away everything too cheap because you need to make those good sales early because that's where you're going to make them. And then towards the three o'clock hour or the time you're saying you're going to close down, you need to be aggressive on what you sell. You need to move it on out. Your deal, you're not a bank. You're not trying to keep it. You want to sell it. Remember, sell, sell, sell. Wow, that was a lot of fun. We made our goal and then some, $500 for six hours of selling stuff that I found in the basement. You too can do it. It's not that hard. Just have to get the stuff, put it on your front lawn, put out some good signs, invite the neighbors, get family members to help you. It's a lot easier than it looks and you'll make money doing it. I'm Aaron Lapidus, the Garage Sale Millionaire, and I'll see you next time. You know, looking back at the garage sale, there were a couple things that I would have done different. I definitely would have started a little earlier, even though, God, it almost killed me getting up that early. Um, I'd get more volunteers because, uh, like I said, I lost one of my volunteers did not show up. And I so badly wanted to have a little kid have a lemonade stand right on the side of my garage sale. I think that would be such a great goodwill gesture for the neighborhood to find a kid that would like to have a lemonade stand have one, and then everybody at your garage sale can enjoy some lemonade, stay a little longer, and the kid can make some money. Or have a table that makes money and it all goes to a charity. So that was some things that I wish I could have done, but overall I was happy with the outcome. I did it for the right amount of time, six hours, and I had a lot of fun. And I have to say, I met neighbors I've never met before. So the outcome was awesome.